Are you going to allow any public images? They didn't. They're not anywhere else either. No, I, I. No, they're doing. It's too crazy. Well, I think if you, uh, the trouble is, if you allow some of the next. No, you don't want to come, and then you yeah. have room You're, for it. Exactly. Then we don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Heather. How are you? I am good. How about you folks? I'm doing great. Nice to be back in Sherman. Yep. Kind of. For all of there, the end is in sight. Tomorrow's a big day. Yeah. Okay, so we have a new Santa. We never I don't know if Mary's let him yet. But we have a new one on that. Who is? I'm going to just to make sure I can hear it well. She is, huh? Well, no, she, she has some. She has a picture. Michael, how are you? Just fine, William. How are you? You tell me? Yeah. Do we have to wait? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Chief, how are you? Nice to see you in person. I know who you are. I'm always the guy who sits in the back room. He stares at that guy over there. Ah. That's why I usually like to eat from him. How are you doing, man? I'm just teaching. Hey, you in there, brother? It is nice to see everybody in person. This is wild, huh? Pretty cool. I'm in this car to record it. Uh oh, I better shut up. Then. He's got an N95 over there. Cool. I got fogged up glasses. Well, that's part of the problem why I'm not big. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but that's the other thing, too. You're supposed to keep your nose covered, but I can't breathe and my fog of my glasses up. Well, that's actually what you know. But as Jim mentioned something about the perception, there was, yeah, you know, yeah, the constituents. So, yeah, there'll be people that'll axe to grind. What are I my binder? Can my binder? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. It's it's, it's, uh, that's why she didn't return yeah. my call. Yeah, it's a um, reaction to treatment. Oh. Mary? Yeah. Here, send it. Hi, send it to Mary. Oh, okay, because I, I didn't see you and I wanted to make sure. I see that there's other that that is one of the things you can do. Okay, so see me. Got it. Okay. Now let's see okay. if I can get the participants. Okay. Now when I hear you when you're talking to them, mm -hmm. we're hearing you in the Okay. How's my voice volume? Very loud. <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> then maybe she should just conduct the meeting because we hear her better than anyone. Cindy, so, can you talk for me real quick? Yes. Can you hear me? Um, tell me how my voice is. Uh, a little loud on our end. Give us a 10 count if you could. Okay. One, a two, count to 10. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't ask her to go any higher. <laughs> no, no. I want her to go backwards. <laughs> backwards. backwards. That's it. Or backwards. multiply or divide. I know, right? Or count backwards, please. She won't be able to reach. How's that volume? Minutes. That's perfect. Okay. All right. I am. Um, Can you hear us easily? Um, I'm going to try and turn my volume up because you're not quite loud enough. Could somebody say something now? Say something. Say okay. something. Did you hear That's me? That's perfect. Yeah. Now, how's my volume? Did it go up? No, it's good. No, you're fine. Perfect. You're okay. 
are all the mics tested, by the way? All our commission mics and everybody? Yeah. Let's, let's everyone just do a quick Perfect. test. And Cinda, if you could make sure you can hear everyone. Perfect. Hello, Check. Cinda. Check. Oh. <laughs> test two, four, Raise six, your eight, hand first. I'm first. <laughs> Who's on first? Hi, Cindy. It's Bill Kryaski. Hey. Can you hear me? Yep. Hear me? Good. Good. Super. It's Jeff. Gotcha. Thanks, Jeff. Kim Denhart. Gotcha. Sounds great. Mary Beth. Good, Mary Beth. And Michael. I can't hear a dang thing. You can't hear me? Oh, I heard, yes. I couldn't see your mouth move and you had the mask on. <laughs> How do you see your mouth? We can't. That's going to be, you know what? Maybe you guys should raise your hand when you speak. Otherwise, I don't think people are going to know who's talking. Really? That's going to be correct. Rough. Okay, we're recording now. I don't know, just a thought. Okay. I'm going to shut my door. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the Board of Commissioners Town of Reading Resort Workshop meeting. Today is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020, 6 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting, so the uh, commission is here in person, and the attendees and participants will be via Zoom. Please uh, rise for the pledge, and aren't you glad you don't have to hold your flag down? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, yeah, I think they only have one. Okay. Um, Mary, are you ready to call Thank the roll? You, Mary. Yes, Commissioner Kayaki. Present. Commissioner Neal. Here. Commissioner Blackburn. Vice Mayor Robinson. Here. Mayor Hansen. Here. Attorney Dan Hart. Here. Okay. Um, under old business, it was about the repair to the dock and the building at Del Bello. Mary, I believe this was tabled. Yes, uh, Commissioner uh, Blackburn. She didn't feel she's not able to make it, so she's uh, taking it, you know, tabling it and having, um, she had a guest coming over. It's one of the bigger tanks out there. Okay. She's going to leave from that. I know um, we're tabling it. I did do go and look at it today, and I looked at the bid that's in the package here. That's all well and fine, but I think we have some underlying issues there that we certainly should go ahead and take care of now. I, in my in my construction experience, the whole frame underneath of that deck needs to be redone. It's split. It's got I think extra that's bolts. What Jenny's in. worried about. Yeah, it's certainly it's certainly. I, I believe this with all sincerity. It needs to be redone. And while we're dropping ten thousand dollars for rail, if, if that's what the price is on, and it, it, it's expensive. I know what composite material costs. There can be the deck taking off. And probably salvage about 75% of it. Take the, the dock apart, the stringers and all the bands around the outside, and completely redo that. Put the stringers back on, reuse 75% of the, the deck material that's there. We might, you know, somebody would have to buy a little bit to finish it up and then put the new rail on. But and, and I think within three years, we're going to be taking it all back off and doing it all again because the dock itself is in terrible condition. I think that's exactly why Danny was a little concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Good, good. Okay. Um, moving on to new business. The first item is tropical storm at a substantial damage discussion. And that's me. Um, as you know, we had about 100 homes or so damaged. During... Closer to 200. Oh, okay. Oh, 200. 200 homes damaged during the tropical storm Etta. And in order to help our residents, we are waiting fees for repair work and we have expedited the permitting process to be able to get people back into their homes as quickly and safely as possible. We had no substantially damaged homes, but some of the other towns did. And by substantially damaged, you have to really get over that 50% number in order for it to be considered substantially damaged. So I would like to be able to help the residents in those single family homes by modifying the code to include temporary occupancy after a storm. Um, this would allow for minimum repairs necessary to make the home safe and sanitary for occupancy. 
This doesn't mean a major kitchen remodel or bathroom remodel. This just means you're allowed to repair the structure to its before damage condition. So we need to help the residents recover from this storm, Etta, and from any future storms. So I think this modification will not, well, I know this modification will not affect our standing with NFIP because I vetted that with so many already. Um, in addition to that change, I would also like to discuss the possibility of changing our five-year cumulative. Um, I've been working with this, with the county and with FEMA long before Tropical Storm Etta, but definitely um, Etta lit a fire under me and stuck me into high gear. So, um, as you know, the five-year cumulative only affects single-family homes. Condos can pretty much do whatever they want because they're not, they don't fall into that. They're not below the and all that good stuff. So I'd like to present a couple different options. Um, the first being change the five-year cumulative to a three-year cumulative where we could keep our green energy and hardening exemptions such as the impact windows and doors and elevating your HVAC system, the roofs with straps, um, any, any sorts of hardening that you can do. And of course, in addition to that, the exemption for the repairs could go to uh, before storm damage. Um, as long as that damage does not exceed the 50% rule, that you don't have a choice in that. That's just the rule. So that's one of the options. The other option would be to go to a one year cumulative with none of the green or hardening exemptions. Um, sorry, I just put national for a second. And um, that would mean. This is what most towns have in place actually. And the only exemption we would include without putting our town at risk with the NFIP is the repair after the storm damage. So the one year cumulative would mean we would be able to, after one year, start back over for that 50%, which is what many, many, many towns do. Um, anything else like going permit to permit would be a form of phasing, which is addressed in FEMA in the red section P758. And when we are audited, which is very likely to happen because of the recent flood damage, we need to be sure that our town is compliant and we are not jeopardizing our standing with FEMA or the NFIP program because that would be detrimental to everyone. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, be included on an ad hoc call and get feedback from the state, which what came out from that call with all the big wigs, um, those were the two options that we came out with and they understood that I wanted to help the residents in these single family homes to be able to do more to their homes yet still be FEMA compliant and allow us not to jeopardize our standing if we should be audited. So those are my two um, choices after they've been vetted with the state and the county and whatnot on that call. We're going to be good. I just need to see how the commission feels about option one or two or even just keeping our five here. And if you have any questions, uh, I believe send us, you can check to see if Lisa Foster is on the phone because she is the uh, FEMA guru. Yes. Um... Lisa, would you like to speak at this time? I, she is on, yes, she has her hand raised. Um, Lisa, I am allowing you to speak. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself and you should be able to speak. Hi, Commission. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, Mary Beth pretty well stated it. Um, you know, the, the goal obviously is to get people back in their homes. Uh, we were unfortunate that we did have quite a bit of homes that, that suffered damage. We were fortunate that we didn't suffer the damage that Madeira Beach did. Um, they're in, in far worse shape than we are. Um, and all the municipalities that, that were impacted by Tropical Storm Ada, um, you know, we need to make sure that we're doing this temporary occupancy, making sure that folks can repair their homes to the minimum, minimum amount necessary to make their homes safe to return to. And we need to be making sure that you know, if they haven't removed their walls and things like that, uh, that they do so, you know, stat so that they don't get the mold, um, black mold can kill. Um, and this effort that, that the mayor is, is recommending, I, I would actually advocate for, 
Um, your cumulative substantial improvement regulation is put in place to encourage resiliency, to encourage people to elevate their homes rather than uh, invest copious amounts of money into structures that are at high risk. This is a different story. This was a smaller flood event. Um, we're not seeing substantially damaged structures where it's going to exceed that 50% to improve, uh, not improve, to um, repair the home. So it it really doesn't make sense to put that minor repair into that cumulative tally. So by adding that additional exemption um, from your cumulative tally, whether you keep it five years or as the mayor recommended, bring it to three, if you put that additional exemption in, so it's 50% cumulatively, cumulatively over X amount of time, except in that cumulative tally, you're not including your green energy, you're not including your hardening, and now this addition would be to not include the repairs to the damage from the from the storm or from future storms that may occur. Um, this way, you're you're still promoting that that resiliency effort. In if you're going to spend a lot of money over X amount of time, you should just consider elevating your home, versus you need to repair your home and now you can't get in. So this this is kind of the fix for that. And, you know, I, I commend Mayor Henderson for taking the initiative to reach out to the county and the state to look for a solution to the, to the evident problem. Um, I know she's been doing research for quite some time to, to work on this and, and this seems like a good solution. Lisa, would you stay, stay on? Uh, Cause I have a couple of questions here. This is Michael, by the way. Um, uh, I, I have no, I have no issue with with us uh, uh, exempting and doing something for for folks that are damaged so they can get back in the structure. I want to go go on to this point about uh, uh, cumulative and uh, five year, three year, one year options because, mm -hmm. as you said, it is about resiliency and and doing something to encourage people to be resilient with their. Uh, with, with their homes and structures and instead of investing money to raise them. So um, the moving from a, from a five year to a three year or, or a one year, I heard the mayor say does not put us in jeopardy with NFIP. Uh, does, it, does it have any CRS impact? So you don't have an answer yet from ISO because you have not had another audit, another full um, CRS verification visit since you changed your code uh, to include exemptions to your five-year cumulative. You've had five-year cumulative since, I don't know, back in the 90s, I believe. Um, this has been a long-standing regulation that you've had. And when you saw, you know, several of your constituents coming to you saying, hey, I just bought this house and and it's exceeded, you know, my, it's not exceeded, but it's, it's at pretty much at my 50% cumulative allowance over the next, you know, three more years that I have to go, but I really need a roof. You know, that's a problem because people are remodeling houses and selling the houses and the cumulative tally was, was being exercised to the extent that it could be. And then folks couldn't, you know, replace windows or do things like put solar panels on. So you amended that code to say, well, if you're doing something like green energy or hardening, which you, you want to promote, right? You don't want to discourage people from doing those things. So you put those exemptions in. And when you did that, it will affect how many points you get through the CRS, but we don't have an answer as to how many points yet. Um, and you probably won't know that until you go through another CRS verification visit and the auditors review it. So did, did I answer your question? <laughs> as far as as far as, yeah. NFIP, as far as your baseline NFIP regulations, though, you're still fine because the NFIP 50% rule is the 50% rule is the 50% rule. You have to abide by that to be compliant with the NFIP. Yeah. By adding this additional exemption to your five-year cumulative, saying okay, um, so and so on, I don't know, Long Point Drive just purchased a home that was fully remodeled and there's only $2,000 left in the allowance for their five-year cumulative, but they have $20,000 worth of damage. So that wouldn't allow them in the tally. Obviously you're going to allow them through the temporary occupancy to repair their home right. back to the condition that it was in, right? The, the basic 
lowest level repairs necessary to get them back into a safe and sanitary home. But cumulatively with your code, that doesn't work. So if you add this exemption for repairs to the storm damage from the cumulative tally, just from the cumulative tally, not from a one-time deal where you come in and you do a remodel and it's more than 50%, that's a substantial improvement period and you didn't have substantial damage, so it's not like you went in and you said, there's more than 50% damage to the, to the structure, and you called it out as substantially damaged, because if you did that, it would have to be elevated. In this case, these are minor repairs from less than a foot of water. It was below the electrical outlets, um, from what I've seen from the damage assessment reports. So, you know, you could probably repair these homes for under $30,000 each, and your values are above that on, on your, on your market value for these structures. So it's well below the 50% rule, rule with NFIP. So adding this clause is just fixing a, a problem rather than going in conflict with the NFIP. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Lisa, you know, you know how I stand with this. The majority, <laughs> uh, the majority of the people uh, that I've talked to, and, and you know quite a few of them yourself, with, I got a great deal of respect for what you do and, and what our PIP committee does. But most of the people that, I, that I've talked to would love to see the one-year cumulative instead of the five-year. <laughs> and uh, most people, I mean, I, I hate to tell you, it might sound funny, but most of them don't even care about the 20% discount because a lot of people have, or they're not getting in anyway. I mean, I don't know whether it's who's, if there's a fault there or they're just not asking for it. But we figured it out. Your, your average flood insurance is what, $3,000 a year on a house? So 20% will give you a $600 savings at the most. So, I mean, I'm just telling you how people feel. So, well, which is why I have yes. been researching this for eight months. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> or maybe more. So, you know, this ETA has definitely brought it to the forefront and made me go, all right, let's do something now. So. So, and you know, to your point about the the CRS discount, you know, that's I I try to explain it to communities when I work with them that it's the CRS discount is sort of a cherry on top of it, right? You have regulations in place to protect your people and to protect their property, and if you're going to get credit for doing that and a an insurance discount, that's fantastic. But you're not implementing things specific for a CRS discount. You're implementing things so that you can be a resilient town and recover from flood events. Correct. Well said. I know this is a shock for all of you to think I'm doing this, but I've been doing it. I really have. Lisa can tell you. <laughs> What's the title rise every year? About three quarters of an inch of water? Is that, um, that's running about what the title rise is every, every year? Sea level rise? Sea level rise, I'd have to pull up the chart. I, I don't have it in front of me. I'm on my cell phone. I'm sorry. I don't have any. I have no paper in front of me. <laughs> That's, That's likely, likely to be higher in the next few years than that three sure. quarters. Yeah. We're looking at a few feet over the next, you know, the life the lifetime of a structure, we're looking at probably three or four feet at, at an intermediate level. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt okay since we added that extra foot of three board and have done some other things that kind of help us balance it somehow. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Discussion? Okay, well, Lisa, thank you so much for your input and thank you for uh, helping me so much navigate through this <laughs> for the last eight months. It's not, it. an easy, it's not an easy topic. I commend all of you for doing such a great job. Thank you for all you do for the town. Thank you for all you do. Okay. No, I can I can agree with with uh, with change for the same reasons that uh, Commissioner Neal said. You know that that puts that that, that puts us uh, a real onus on on people who are want to improve their properties, want to do the right thing, and if we can do this and it doesn't affect uh, NFIP. You know, it, it doesn't a, affect the NFIP, but it could have an impact on CRS. Yeah, I understand that. I, I understand that. Yes, yeah, right, right, nice. right. So, well, the, the you know, um, in, in, and again, as, as Commissioner Neal said, the, 
the sacrifice on the CR, and as, and as Lisa said, the sacrifice on the CRS is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's important for us to note that, but on the other hand, it's also important to be uh, helpful to the residents that need and want to do what they. And that's what I've been trying yeah. to figure out yeah. very yeah. long. Yeah. Here. So, okay. Um, I just kind of need to get a consensus to see what you're looking at. If you'd rather go with the one year, I know Jeff said one. I'm, I'm actually the one for one. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with that. If we're going to change it, let's let's make the big change. Here. Yeah. Okay, so we have the consensus to uh, move forward. With one, I have several things for you, Jim, that I've gathered and that can be included in the new uh, ordinance. Yeah, and that's something I want because this this is the first that I've heard of it tonight. But obviously, to change change your ordinances and change land development regulations oh. requires it being referred to the. Uh, planning exactly. zoning board is your LPA, and then two advertised readings before the commission. And I, I understand the intent is to help the residents. How quickly do you need to have the help? Well, in I place? think that's what I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out. Right. Sort of I know way we, to do we, it. I know we can't do the whole one year thing right away because that takes time. But I'm wondering if we can't just amend the code because I declared a local state of emergency to allow them to make those repairs to allow them to get back into their homes quickly. And, and that's along that's, the lines of what I was thinking of something okay. that's a state of emergency. Because I declared that, I think that, the effectiveness of and when, when I was on that ad hoc call, I said, I declared a local state of emergency, tell me what my options are. And they kind of thought that we could amend that code pretty quickly without going through a whole lot of fanfare. But in the rest, yes, it will well, take I, a little time. I think we can amend the code, but it may be I'm possible not. to suspend the operation of a couple of code provisions to provide the effect that you're trying to get okay. even quicker than that. Great. Just I know we have I've had a lot of dealings with the, <laughs> this lately. So yeah. Okay. Good. Good, good. You good? I'm good. Okay. Um, moving on to the second item, which is legal services discussion. Okay, hey, let me begin by saying that I appreciate the services provided by uh, Denhart and uh, Rubenstein. Jim in particular has years of experience with the town and has uh, historical knowledge built over decades that I don't think any of us, uh, or that I know none of us have, uh, save with the exception of perhaps the, the town clerk. Mm -hmm. So nothing against Jim or Lauren, but as the Towns elected officials, we have an obligation to periodically evaluate our options for all elements of the town's operation and administration, and that should include legal services. And that has not been done in this town uh, that uh, I can I can find. Uh, granted, is the commissioner having responsibility over finance? I probably should have brought this up during the uh, budget development process, but that be as it may i'm i'm now bringing it before the commission and just to ask is there any interest on the part of the commission to entertain proposals from denhart and rubenstein to continue their services as well as uh solicit other law firms who may be interested in providing legal services to the town and making uh, an evaluation and, and move forward so i look at us at it as a fiduciary responsibility that we have to look at all different elements and components of things that we do. Uh, and this is just one of those. Jim and I have talked about that and I've assured him that, you know, this this is nothing on my part uh, against uh, against him or, or Lauren, just that I think that we have an obligation to look at things. You know, um, Commissioner Robinson, it's good. I mean, that's Competitive bidding and everything is, is a great thing. But personally, I think right now for the best, uh, the best thing we can do as a town is leave this leg. I mean, let's table this like till April or something, because we have some pending suits against us. And I don't think that this is the time to, to jump into this discussion. Uh, I like um, uh, Denhart and Rubenstein. I mean, I've known I've known this man right here. He helped me up in Old Clark 20 years ago. So, which, which I don't remember. Yeah, you don't remember because you didn't know. Me. But it's a good 
what we have right now, I don't, I don't think we need to be messing with at this point in time. I, I, I really think that we should table this out at least until April or something. Because, like I said, because of the pending suits that we have in place. And I, I would like to uh, mirror the uh, comments from Commissioner Neal. I think too, we owe ourselves, uh, uh, we do we do ourselves a good service by taking this for a while until we go through some of the things we believe in this. And like I say, well, I, I brought it to the commission well, for, to, to, hear, to, hear, to hear from the uh, commission. I don't, I don't know uh, in response to you know that uh, that in April we'll be any further along with some of these suits than we yeah, are than we are today. It's just a, uh, but just a day after that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, but I but uh, as long as is but I but I do get the, do I do I get the sense from the commission that it that at some point we should be considering this as we do any other element uh, of our business. But we have a responsibility to get correct. Correct. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know, All right. six months down the road. All right, we'll let, we'll let it, we'll let it we'll set for now. Yeah. Right. That's it. All right. All right, under miscellaneous, I don't know if we have anything more. I guess that's right. No. Okay, under miscellaneous, the can regular I, meeting, what, what? From miscellaneous, can I, can I, I wanna bring something up. I know this. I want to. I want to talk about the why we don't have Bruce Cooper for building official right now. And it was just like a surprise that all of a sudden, you know, Neil's here. I have no problem with safe built. Safe built. I have no problem with Bruce Cooper. I thought he was an excellent building official. Neil is a good building official. I've known these guys for many years. But how how can all of a sudden? Bruce Cooper is gone, and we didn't even have a discussion about him not being here no more. He was the he was the listed building official for this town. Actually, we have two listed building officials. Okay, that's fine. It was it was Bruce Cooper and me. Yeah, we we got rid of one without having any, without even having. Well, a discussion it wasn't it wasn't amongst, something amongst the commission. It wasn't something that I really felt that was necessary to air our dirty laundry, and I don't think that I well, would care to do that right now, but. So there were some things that happened. Transparency is what everybody does. That's right. It is. Yeah. So um, I did bring Attorney Denhart into a meeting I had with Faithfield, and Faithfield actually agreed once they realized what had happened and transpired that they agreed that it probably was not the right thing to have happened. Um, and it looked a little bit um, shady. So. Um, I heard what happened, and I, I think that it, it wasn't just one thing, though. That was the thing. That okay. was the thing that you probably heard was just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. There are several that led up to it, and uh, the fire department is actually. I had a conversation with uh, the fire marshal, Sonia. We we have to pay very close attention to Florida Statute four six eight point six zero four, building officials' responsibilities and duties. And interference with them. We have to, we got to pay attention to that. I don't want to read it right now. I'll be happy to give everybody a copy and we can talk about this in another workshop. No, but I, but, but, I, but, but I will say okay. that, that building departments in municipalities, large and small, are highly susceptible to outside pressure, fraud, abuse, and, and favoritism. Strong, strong oversight of a billing department is absolutely essential to ensure you know compliance with the law and compliance with right with regulation so you know i you, you gotta be very careful it's a final line there i I, I i i understand that okay but it's a failure on our part as elected officials to know that something is is wrong and to allow that to continue Without taking, without taking action, I, I so I support this. And Safeco sat here with Jim and I also, yeah. and agreed with us that it was the right thing at the time. I'm just, 
I look at our charter and how it's worded and everything, and I don't, you know, it's I know circumventing it is not good because that's not good for nobody. Well, if, if it would have been anybody other than Neil taking over because he was named on the contract, if at any time Bruce is not the building official for any reason, Neil is it. So there you go. Okay. So it wasn't something that we needed to bring out. We, would, we already voted on this before, Jack. We already voted um, that it was Neil if Bruce was not okay. the so, well, well, you know, I just took me by surprise. All of a sudden, well, it, we, trust me, it took me by surprise as well. We had Bruce. I still have a great deal of respect for Bruce. I love Bruce. Don't get me wrong. Mistakes, just, mistakes, people make mistakes. I've made mistakes in my life. You've made mistakes in your life, I'm sure. But Bruce, you know, all of a sudden he's gone. And, and then I'm looking at, well, okay, what happened to Bruce? So it's just me as a, as a commissioner. I'm supposed to know about this stuff. Well, before before it happens, you know. I mean, that's just wait. That's just the charter. It's how it is. I'm I'm trying to protect the town. Okay. Okay. All right. The very best that I can is airing dirty laundry about this. It's gonna hurt the town. It's gonna hurt Safe Bill. It's gonna hurt. Well, that's fine. If you want mm -hmm. me to air it, I will. Yeah, let's, let's go. I mean, we can we can talk about all the things that led up to it. We'll Jim was it, Jim yeah. was surprised as well of we'll all the things. We'll take it out now, and I'll talk to I'll talk to Mr. Denhart here a little bit. Okay, anything else? Okay, so the regular meeting will be following this. And the workshop meeting will be Wednesday, December 30th, 2016. But that is, I don't know, is, is anybody out of town? Is, hopefully not. <laughs> is, uh, I actually, uh, okay. my son got married in September and we're all crazy nonsense. So. So. That and is, it's actually two days before New Year's. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Before New Year's Eve, um, I can join via you know Zoom. You can't but actually. Yeah, I know that must have like, changed like, given the situation right now, unfortunately, and I hate to do this, but um, I will be out of town at that at that for that meeting. Enjoy your holiday. Do you feel like it's just too close to New Year's Eve and the holidays, or do you want to continue? I mean, on? we're all, we're we're all we're already holding a kind of a hybrid workshop uh, because we pushed the November workshop off. I don't know that we need another workshop in another couple of weeks, sure. three you weeks. So I just, unless you know, something for me, that anybody wants to I cancel it unless there's something that's pressing that has to come up. That'd be my vote. Okay. My opinion. Uh, well, thank you. Jack, you my you yeah, I'm good with it. Okay. So hey, we agree on that. Oh wow, that's a first. No, I don't. Okay, so with that to everything, we're adjourned for the workshop. And so we're just gonna lead right into the um, regular meeting. It is now 6.32. So I'd like to call the regular meeting um, to order. We don't need to do the pledge again, I don't believe. But Mary, you wanna call the roll? <clears throat> the recognition of Sorry, yes, please. Present. Commissioner Neal. Here. Commissioner Black. Yeah. Vice Mayor Robinson. Here. Mayor Henderson. Here. Attorney Denhart. Here. Okay. I'm opening the regular meeting with um, I need a motion to approve of the minutes from the special meeting October 7th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the, the minutes for that meeting. Second. A motion by. Vice Mayor Robinson, second by Commissioner Neal. Any discussion? Mary, uh, please call roll. Commissioner Tariaski? Yes. Commissioner Neal? Yes. Vice Mayor Robinson? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, on to the ratification of the bills for October, November, and December 2020. I believe everyone receives the email for that, and we all need to sign them. Second. Motion by Commissioner Pryeski, a second by Vice Mayor Robinson. Um, any discussion? Uh, Mary, please call roll. Commissioner Pryeski? Yes. Commissioner Neal? Yes. Vice Mayor Robinson? Yes. Yes. Okay, on the commission reports, um, I think. I'm just going to uh, report on that we have the binding cost estimate from Duke Energy for the website. Also, Mark, if you want to roll right into that, 
as quickly as you can possibly be. Mary, I don't, do you, I know you printed it out, but I don't have it. I think it's still sitting on the printer. Do you know it was, what the number was? Um, 1,500,563. So it's, that's pretty, I think that was pretty fair for the West Side because the West Side, they said, was so much more complicated and so much more transformers and commercial pieces of property and whatnot. So yeah, I thought at one time they were looking at 3 million. Yeah, it was, but you know, this would be coming from Penny. That's good. Know. Yeah, right, right, right. But still, that's a better estimate. Oh, I thought so too. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a, a company that we've been talking with the other, the other mayors and I've been talking about doing the project together and feel pretty good about like, getting ready to come up with that um, as well. So that was a good thing. Um, I know that the charging station, they're getting ready to paint the lines out there. And uh, we're going to have our little ribbon cutting, hopefully, with Jeff Baker from Duke about it. And I think because I talked so much last time, I think that's all I was going to say other than Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, please be safe. The parade. Oh, the, oh gosh, I forgot. The parade is Saturday. Around 2.30, I think we're going to take off from here. The Santa Parade. We have um, all the commission is going to be in that parade doing our normal. We'll go through the entire town, every street. Chief Burford's here, gonna take care of the fire truck for us. Um, and I think that might be it for me. I would like for both Chief Swan and Chief Burford to give a short little anything on the police and fire, whoever would like to go first. Age before beauty, or how that go? <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. I'm Burford, and for the entire team of the city of Seminole Fire Rescue Park, one of two departments that serve you. Um, your later assistant uh, reports to Commissioner Blackburn has been controlled at every for the potential for wrap up of the call volume that we had through the month of November. So it was a little bit higher than normal in comparison to as I sent to some of the email, just because of the storm generated uh, a few additional calls. So there were two non emergency fire responses where an average response time is eight minutes and 59 seconds, and there were 10 emergency fire responses, which is a little bit higher than we normally experience. For an average response time of nine minutes and 18 seconds, a little bit longer than we typically like, but a lot of those were related to the storm again. And they were everything from uh, starting fire calls to fire alarms to uh, the rescue calls. And so on. on the EMS side of the house, we had four non emergency EMS calls for a response time of three minutes and 36 seconds and 21 emergency response or EMS responses. For an average response time of four minutes and 22 seconds. Um, just very quickly, we are keeping track and working very closely with your queen on the uh, development and the design phase for the new station next door. So things are going really well there. We had a great meeting the other day, both chiefs and I and um, the, the county. And the, the, uh, the contractor has been uh, uh, secured for a design. Um, we're very pleased with that coming out for, for our site. We're just watching the COVID very, very closely. We're excited to uh, hear the results of tomorrow's meeting. We had a meeting today. Um, Mary, you might have been on the call, the rock call, vice chair as well, talking about vaccinations. The initial phase coming out for um, nursing care, we're one of two counties that have been uh, identified in the state of Connecticut for long term health care facilities, which is really great that we had some issues there. Our first responders. And then hopefully more widespread vaccination that we all may be a part of getting out into the spring and into the summer. So we're pleased about that and looking forward to those things. Thank you. I just want to remind you that you're in Florida and not Connecticut anymore. Yes, Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you did. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah. response right there. <laughs> Connecticut weather. Yeah. Summertime weather. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
fire and storm, emergency rescue vehicles that are in the line. And uh, throughout the night, we respond to citizens running from storm to me, uh, making sure that they made it through the night uh, as best they could. I'm pleased to tell you, I just I just told uh, Heather a few minutes ago. Uh, last night we got approval to um, accept a transfer of a Humvee um, vehicle, which is a military surplus, is not for tactical purposes because it's for high water rescue. So it's going forward. Uh, we learned uh, uh, quite a lesson in the platform. And uh, I have no doubt that it will be put to use in the future. And soon after that, the uh, four wheel drive truck that we ordered a few months ago, uh, two weeks ago. And we will have two vehicles uh, presently uh, in our fleet that we will be able to facilitate that will help us facilitate high water rescue in the event that we need to. Um, I think it's a, a, a good transfer to the way we do operations. And the police department has now been my goal for the last two years to figure out um, and reshape the police department as to what we do best and where we go. Our needs are for our community. Um, we are and we have become a community oriented police department. Uh, we also got approval last night to uh, for transferring some of our arsenal, aging arsenal, firearms arsenal. Um, more of the automatic weapons that used to have assault rifles and traded them into new um, shotguns, state of the shotguns that will also help us uh, deploy and less vehicles. Um, activity if we need to do it if required. Um, we retain enough firepower within our agency. To respond to any type of emergency needs that could arise, but um, our community and our demographics are not, in my opinion, my professional opinion, um, require that we have 16 assault rifles. So the downside is getting new state of the art shotguns as part of our, we change our, our training regime in light of current events. In addition to that, I want to thank uh, the mayor and, and the commissioner for the Gary for the generous donation to our No Shade in November uh, fundraising event that uh, sponsors uh, primarily. It started out as a Secret Santa kind of uh, banner um, supporting uh, some several children this year. We sponsored three. As you know, last year we sold uh, challenge coins. This year I kind of had a specialty item made in as well that we uh, raised funds for. And uh, we set a goal of $2,000. We had four officers participate. We had the judging last week and uh, officer thanked officer Andrew who won the beard contest. But uh, the real the real crux of it is we have Supported three children this year that were abused and taken from the home. Um, we were aware of the children. All of their needs have been met, plus uh, several other um, several other items that will be distributed to other children. As far as the camp uh, fundraising campaign, we also sponsored as a group of two different charities. This year, we were able to add a third. Because of the generous donation of $1,000. Um, I challenged Indian Ford last night and Mayor Serrano, based upon Mayor Henderson's uh, request, um, he wanted to make sure he would need a thousand and one dollars. I knew it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he told me he was going to do that. So, you know, that's it's, okay. It's, I have a resident that donated $1,500. I was going there. <laughs> you have some very generous investments here. We had one resident who gave us a fifteen hundred dollar donation for it. Um, what what we did is we added a, a, a third charity in addition to Family Um That charity 
is a charity that, that sponsors kids who are, who are aging out of foster care. And we try to find uh, charities. They're all legitimate 501c3 uh, charities. We've gathered them all. And uh, bottom line is we raised five thousand and one dollars so far. Um, with a set goal of two, and um, I couldn't be more static. So ultimately, uh, on the fourteenth, we'll be cutting checks to those charities and or more money that we had. So, so thank you very much. So I hope everybody has a great holiday. I appreciate your support. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, the COVID uh, pandemic is still with us. Infections are up, hospitalizations are up, and unfortunately, so are deaths. So everyone really needs to, to uh, uh, heed uh, the rules for that's concerned. You know, uh, Chief Burford mentioned the, the call today with uh, Pinellas County Emergency Management. I was on that call. A couple of facts that I picked up there that were really interesting that the first rollout of vaccines in the US will probably be 30 million uh, doses. That sounds like a lot until you consider the fact that it takes two doses for every individual. So that cuts it to 50 uh, million. Um, and when you consider there are 21 million healthcare workers and 87 million essential workers, that 30 million doesn't go go uh, really far. Uh, Chief Burford mentioned that Pinellas County along with uh, Broward County are uh, pilot counties for uh, nursing homes. Uh, so that's going to be really, really great. And we're hoping that uh, that our first responders, that all of you are in that uh, first wave as well. The county expects that uh, probably by March or April, that's when we'll be into this phase of multi-mass vaccination uh, sites uh, like you see with uh, now the testing that's going on. And that hopefully by July, as early as July, the vaccine will be available in doctor's offices, pharmacies, drugstores, and all those, all those locations as well. So uh, the good news is that there is a vaccine on the way. The bad news is that infections are up and I know that everybody is weary of, uh, is COVID weary and they began to slack off a bit. Now's not the time, uh, not the time to do that. The other important fact that was mentioned on this call, which I think it's important for us to remind uh, residents about and everybody we communicate with is that, that this vaccine is 95% effective. It is probably, one of the most effective, if not the most effective vaccine of, of any that's ever been developed. You know, when you consider that flu vaccines are only about 50% effective, this is tremendous. And even though it was uh, brought about very rapidly and swiftly, it was not done without all of the necessary checks and balances to make sure that it was safe. So we would encourage uh, everyone when uh, the opportunity uh, presents itself to be vaccinated that they that they do that. Uh, it's good for the, you as an individual, good for your family, and good for good for all of us. Uh, the second thing that I want to mention is that, uh, as you know, uh, we installed a flow meter on the uh, on the main 
uh, lift station to compare uh, the uh, sewage outflow uh, with that meter and the county meter. The good news is, is that the county meter appears to be accurate because it's re the both meters reflect about the same the same volume. Um, that's good news because that helps us understand that our problem is not one with a faulty meter, but it is uh, an infiltration problem, as as uh, Commissioner Neal uh, knows uh, as well. Um, so the next phase here. In, in this helping us understand the problem is to look at the volumes of sewer through some of our other, through our list stations and comparing that with water usage of that portion of town that is serviced by that list station. So if we can compare the volumes by list station with the volume of water usage in that same area, that should help us narrow down where our infiltration problem is is worst. Uh, so that's what we're hoping uh, to do. And I want to uh, I want to thank uh, members of the FAC, uh, particularly Kirby Howell and uh, Chris Henderson for the work that they've done in in pulling all that that uh, that data together uh, for us. I second that. They did a great job with that. So that's my report. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Neal. Um, the sad, I'm going to say something here. That I'd like to have a moment of silence, a silence for, for Kenny. Kenny Bobans at King's Corner Restaurant passed away last week with COVID. I want to say Kenny was a wonderful friend. I've known Kenny for a long time, and uh, it was like way surprising. But he did have, he had he had an underlying condition, but then uh, he he just he left us way too early. That's uh, sad because he retired to go travel and then <laughs> sold his business and uh, just terrible. retired, just retired, just started terrible. taking it easy. And, uh, I, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was talking to him one day, and then the next day I heard he was in the hospital. Yeah. So, I mean, it just it it, it it hit me pretty hard. Um, I have to say that that's like five friends in now in the last six months. From COVID, all of them? No, no, oh. not all COVID, but just when they start piling up, you know, kind of makes you think of how you need to do your life. Yeah, we have had a couple of residents that have passed away from it too. You know. All right. Well, so it's a real thing. <laughs> um, back to the to the meters. The I I actually I'm not surprised that the meters are on the same level. Uh, because I know the county worked diligently to help us make sure that that meter was right with all these uh, uh, calibration tests that they were doing. And uh, the laterals, our problem is the laterals. And I, I don't disagree with moving the meter around to, to kind of isolate it and see which one's worse than another. I know of one lateral in general right in front of the wine knot and the uh, San Victor Motel, it's pumping about, I'd say five gallons an hour from the leak that I saw in the video. So if if we go back to the video of the laterals and repairing the laterals, we're going to catch up to this sooner or later. That's in the, right in the direction that we were heading in to start with. But I actually I have no no regrets about getting that meter. That was that just confirmed that we we do have problems. We are we're waiting on an MOT permit right now so we can start on Golf Boulevard. There's going to be intermittent delays on Golf Boulevard. First thing we're going to do is check all the manholes just like we initially intended. We started it doing one day when we got shut down. And then we're going to cope, we're going to fix the, the three laterals that we have right now. We we are in, we may be able to line two of them. One of them we're going to have to cut up Golf Boulevard in a day. So we'll just go back and keep on going in the direction we're going and move forward with it. Um, another thing that I have, uh, if anybody, I just, we got another request for a brick at the Veterans Park. And if, if anybody has a, a request that wants to request a brick, it's best to buy them in like eight or six or eight towns them at a time. So if they want to get in touch with Town Hall, get in touch with either Mary or Sherry, 
I will get the numbers and then I'll call the people back and we'll see what we need to do and then we can place an order over over at Indian Shores. And I was going to work on something else this week. Uh, the fence for the, the rear yards making, um, I, I discussed it with Lauren a little bit, uh, Attorney Rubenstein, and we're we're heading in that direction where we can get something written to present. That concludes my report. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Fayeski. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, First, I attended the big, my first big C meeting with the mayor and also Commissioner Blackburn. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because obviously it was somewhat timely, a discussion that took place regarding how much devastation took place here in all the towns represented there. Um, and one of the uh, key pieces of discussion was the whole beach renourishment. And I bring that up only because in my travels in the last couple of weeks since taking on and being the new commissioner in District 4, almost every person I met, and I'm not talking only about the people like myself who live on the beach, but people who enjoy the beach that live across the street or maybe two blocks away from the beach. And um, I think we need to revisit it. I think we need to get some more correspondence out. We might need to have some more workshops about how we might be able to uh, progress in getting the easements associated with getting the re-nourishment. And as the mayor knows, and I think most of us know, we're under a time crunch right now, uh, which unfortunately I think we might miss the boat based on what, what's been presented. Um, and the whole project is in jeopardy, not just I know. Indian Shores writing control. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was actually, uh, I, I happen to be one of the, I live in the condominium, one of the few that actually signed off and gave permission for the easement. Um, but I got to tell you that uh, after what we experienced, if there's any evidence or concrete uh, evidence associated with what has happened because of Mother Nature, I think we really owe it to our constituents to resurrect that and start a process. And I would be more than happy to lead that effort as the commissioner to start to move on. I, actually, the beach is my- uh, <laughs> I know it is, and I, but I'm- And, and under, I, understand, you know, the mayor, both the mayor and I oh. in particular have done a tremendous amount of work, you know, visiting all of those uh, properties, talking to all those properties, holding, uh, holding right. meetings, and and going to special meetings to try to convince folks and holding special meetings. We to had try a special mail for the county. Yes, just everything. All part of a all part of a, a very comprehensive plan by the county to make sure that we had the, the proper messaging and that we were all using the same messaging across all of these uh, different areas, and and making sure that that uh, we we communicated as effectively as we could. A couple of issues that that in particular that that cause us cause us problems. One is with condominiums, uh, but you know, Lavastana as well as yours, we're about the only two that that signed off because legal counsel for for uh, most of the condominiums have have and they've all shared this this information mm -hmm. that uh, they should not give up those those rights. Mm -hmm. Part of the argument, on the other hand, is is with this notion of a perpetual easement versus a, a easement associated with a particular renourishment uh, project. And that's what caused everything to fall off the rails, this perpetual easement. And some of the things that we heard are, are just um, uh, amazing. Well, that, I, that, I, that the whole, you know, the whole effort is to, is to uh, uh, build out that beachfront property so they can put other other structures there and other condominiums and that's not not it at all at all. Well, you know, I, Bill, anything that you can you can you can do to talk to your neighbors to talk to anyone on the on uh, that are that are property owners because that's those are the people that you have to get to. Those folks uh, individually 
Uh, well, please do. I, I will, and I have. But I, the, the other the other notion the other notion is, and you heard it at the at the big steam meeting, is that you know this 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 notion that oh don't worry about it the the core will come in and do it you know we don't need to do that you know that's that that's fallacy nobody nobody believes that they need to be lobbied. Washington. Well, well, it's yeah, interesting, and, and, and that is definitely being done. Yeah. Well, the one, I, there were a couple things, but absolutely, they it seemed like the focal point. Uh, and I think uh, Mary Beth helped me here because I don't know all the players yet. I think it was the mayor from Bel Air that mentioned that there's this whole, uh, I'll call it miscommunication about an easement. Uh, and I think that's one of the areas well, where and maybe, there, was a, there was a resident that sent out. A big right. mailing to all the beachfront owners and people are actually asking for their easements back yeah so yeah so did a lot of damage yeah so there was some some but the other piece was too is i was surprised to hear and that it hasn't been revisited but my understanding is that 100 percent compliance dates back to like 1977 or something it's pretty far back and um not to take it from uh, a famous movie but it's the 90s mr banks uh, you know, I, I I don't know what we can do to press it, press Tallahassee or maybe try to look at that, but you know, 100%. I don't know anybody. I mean, I don't get 100% in my own family sometimes on what things I want to do. So well, they do have beach towns that have 100%. I know they do. Yep. I don't know how they got it. <laughs> I know, but I, it's just I just found that amazing. So it is. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to mention that. And by the way. Vice Mayor Robinson, I'm not in any way, shape, or form casting any dispersions on you and the mayor's efforts on this. I know what you did. I was present in a lot of those meetings over the last couple of years. So uh, I do appreciate that. But um, it's something that um, when I when I look out my condominium every morning, I face the Gulf and I've got a corner unit. So I got the southwestern exposure. Uh, the difference between what I saw after the renourishment and then just recently, I think something with like 50% of it's already been washed away or, or close to. Yep. So, um, Mother Nature can really, you know, cause some. Yeah, it's just a topic of storm. Exactly. Exactly. There's, there's yeah. growing that's in place. You need to push to get more of them installed. We've been you know, pushing all that. They run mm -hmm. perpendicular to the I'm just saying they work. They Be work. careful about what grinds you put in. Though. I gotta, I gotta tell you, you know, I, I, I lived in in St. Pete Beach where they put in the ugliest groins that destroyed property values much worse than losing the beach. The ones that are right here now are all covered up now. They were put in years ago. Yeah, I mean that's why we have a lot of beach right here at, at, at yeah. our beach access for Pinellas County, right across from Fairland. There's a growing situation out there, and that's pretty still a pretty pretty tight beach. Anyways, you know, it's just something. Yeah, the breakwater. Break there. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Okay, and then um, I attended my first board of trustees meeting at the Gulf Beaches Public Library, and um, uh, I guess I, I I was actually kind of blown away by the statistics. Um, we were actually uh, only down about forty some odd percent with traffic. Uh, and that was pretty much consistent across the county and circulation was only down 26 percent so and that includes everything including the kiosk so i don't know most people i found something out that i didn't know that apparently treasure island has a kiosk so they fill that so and that's so that included that kiosk also that's in treasure island so um i guess people i think it was a proximity thing yes i am i, am, I got yeah. from vince okay. the uh the yeah. background after the meeting yeah. as to why that was put in place but i'm just saying that included the, the, right. the activities is down in treasure island and there that's my uh report thank you okay um moving on to old businesses are you ready <laughs> the first reading of ordinance 21-01, sewer leases, right? Ordinance number 21-01, an ordinance of the Town of Reading Shores, Florida, amending section 124-7 of the Code of the Town of Reading Shores, Florida, pertaining to sewer rates, providing for severability, providing for inclusion of such amended ordinance in the Code of the Town of Reading Shores, Florida, providing an effective date. I make a motion we pass. Ordinance 21-01, sewer usage rate. I second that. A motion by Commissioner Neal, second by Vice Mayor Robinson. Any discussion amongst the commission? 
Um, Cinda, are you out there? Cinda? Where'd you hang? I know. We, I was going to ask. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Jack and see if there's anyone with a hand raised in the audience. Um, so you, so you all know we have uh, 19 citizens, oh, actually 20. We just had one added. Um, if there is anyone that would like to speak on um, these topics right now, please raise your hand. Okay, we have um, Jeanette DeMarco. Oh, hand went down. This is just on the sewer usage right, right now. Pardon me, the sewer? Uh-huh, it's on the Okay, so we're, we're anyone who has, uh, who would like to speak on the sewer, we have a three minute window for you to speak. Please raise your hand at this time. So it'd be regarding the sewer. Um, we have one uh, citizen who would like to speak. That is Carol Music. Um, Carol, I'm going to allow you to talk. I do need you to reiterate your name and your address. Unmute yourself and you may begin to speak and I will start to time you, of course, once you start to speak. You are unmuted and you may proceed. Carol, can you unmute yourself? You need to unmute yourself at your end, Carol. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay. All right. Okay, 17822 Lee Avenue, 17820 Lee Avenue. Uh, it's very hard to understand anybody with the mask, so I, I, it's, I was, it was very muffled. This bill is about sewage usage rates. How does that affect the local citizens? The change is that currently that uh, uh, the billing is done based upon the number of fixtures you have. In other words, the number of bathrooms. Uh, this is a switch to um, uh, usage. Uh, so it's a usage rate system, uh, and it's exactly what the county has in the systems which they manage. So this is uh, your bill by, say, per gallon, and is it a separate meter that's on each person's house? It's billed by your water usage. Yeah. And, so, and it, you know, it, it's based on so many thousands of gallons of water would be your sewer fee. Most people, most people are probably going to save a little bit of money in this if they if they use their water wisely. Now, this, was heavily, this, this was heavily discussed and presented at previous meetings. I don't have those notes in front of me uh, uh, as we as we speak, but Commissioner Neal is correct. For most people, it will be it will be a savings. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Okay, it looks like that is it um, for the citizens who are attending. Thank you, mm -hmm. All right, any other discussion with the commission? All right, hearing none here, please call the roll. Commissioner Craig Axby? Yes. Commissioner Gio? Yes. Commissioner Robinson? Yes. Yes. Okay, moving on to new business is to ratify the engagement services of um, Garganese, Weiss, Diarista, and Feldman. And that's me. Um, we were, the town was served a lawsuit and uh, we put a claim into our insurance carrier so I could, you know, just tell them, put them on notice, we can serve with the normal protocol. And in, I, I also contacted the person, the attorney that um, represents us in another case, and I called him and I said, hey, just wanted to let you know we've been served another lawsuit, so be, look, be on the lookout for this. And he said, okay, no problem. Well, apparently he had a conflict of interest in that for some reason or another. And in all that whole talking to him, the conflict of interest, a uh, letter from the uh, insurance carrier that denied coverage. So um, we were faced with what do we do now since the attorney isn't going to be covered from our Florida League of Cities. And um, I asked 
for that attorney to give me a name of uh, a specialist that could help us with this case. And so he did. Um, I also called attorney Ben Hart and, and told him and asked him about, you know, whatever. And he said, well, you either have to pay me or you got to pay this person. And I told him who the person was. He said, the person is very good. And um, he said, you know, see what he's going to charge and go from there, I guess. And um, so the attorney that I contacted, Anthony Gardenese, said he would charge us a very reasonable rate of $200 an hour. And uh, attorney Denhart normally charges $300 an hour. So it seems like a no-brainer to go with someone who's going to charge us um, $100 an hour less. And time was of the essence. So um, after I ran it by attorney Denhart, I um, I signed a letter of engagement with him. Um, I don't, I can't imagine anyone to not want to save money. And this is what we normally do. We would hire, you know, we've done it before we start other cases with David Healy and whatnot. And we've done it, so it's not anything that's out of the ordinary. So I'll make a motion to ratify the hiring of uh, Garganzi, Weiss, and the uh, Gresta and Saltzman. I'll second that, but I, I want to say I'm going to okay, second. So we have a motion and a second. Yeah. So I'm going to have a second. Okay, I've already talked to uh, Mr. Denhart here about that, and he's in full agreement with it. I do really think, though, according to our charter, this should have been discussed before it was signed. And I don't want to get in trouble. I'm not going to make a, another deal out of it, but we should have had a commission discussion before this was signed, for sure. Okay, well, Jeff, sometimes time is of the essence, and I know that you have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars without commission approval, and we ratified yes, that. Um, it was approved by the commission before it spent because not, we had a no. budget. We had That's a contract. Mayor. What's that, Mayor? We had a contract. We had a big back contract to do all that work. You want to go? You're going. To, okay. Go no, I'm just asking Mary. That's mm -hmm. he did spend hundreds of thousands of dollars that he ratified after the fact. We also had a contract to do it with us. Already a contract in place. We already have the contract in place with Attorney Denhart. Okay. Do you want to spend more hundred dollars more an hour? No. Attorney Denhart said it was good. Attorney. I just think we should have had a discussion. Sometimes time is of the essence, and it needs to be answered. Have a contract, but when you had emergencies come up and you made that call, let's get it done and ratified it afterwards. And I think that's what you well, let's move forward. I second it. I'm gonna let it argue in motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Senda, will you please ask the uh participants if anyone wants to speak? Yes. Is there anyone that would like to speak on this subject? Please raise your hand. And we still have 19 attendees. Okay, we do not have um, anyone wishing to speak at this time. So we will conclude that the, the public speaking portion. Thank you, Cinda. Okay, Mary, you can call it off. Yes. 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 Okay, moving on to the next item, which is ratifying the engagement services of Henderson Consulting and LLC. Mary, I guess you can I'll take that one. Yes. Um, I had a couple of things come up that I needed to have some advice on, and I will you all will be the Henderson who has been on care of a personnel committee and the confidence that you all have in her. So I did reach out to Lisa and um, I asked approval if I could go ahead and get this engagement letter signed so I could just proceed with what I needed to take care of with some HR issues. So that is where we are tonight is if I can ask you all to please ratify that. I'll make a motion to ratify the uh, engagement of Hendrickson Consulting. Sorry. Motion and second. Any discussion? Attorney Gennard is in conflict of interest with, with the program committee chair. Um, I wasn't really right. aware of this. I will look into that and make sure there's not. So, okay, I believe that. I don't. I don't well, have any problem with it. Or she's an MC, okay, I'm, I'm just. I'm just putting it out there. I, yeah, I don't. Think, I would say I don't think so at this time, but I'll be glad to look at it a little bit further. All right, thank you. Uh, yes. 
Yes, Mark. You got any roll call? You call the roll? No. No, no, no I'm sorry. <laughs> no. We're just talking. And we're just talking. Okay. Uh, if I could, then, because I increased some help, maybe I feel like I thought we were in the um, I would like to speak. Um, I spent many hours, as Mary knows, Mary Beth knows, with Lisa. And would you pull your mic? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I put I pulled it away from me. I'm sorry. I I spent many hours on the HR committee before becoming a commissioner, and I cannot tell you how much I've been impressed with what she the knowledge she has. And she also is in a very senior level position, which I also understand now she's either the deputy mayor or whatever now in Pinellas. Right? Mm -hmm. So, city mayor. City, city, city mayor. One, yeah. of, one of two. One of two. So, I don't know if there are too many other competent people that, with the credentials that Lisa has that we could have helping us. Uh, here in the town, so I just want to make sure before we vote, I want I want that on the record because I think she's phenomenal. She's outstanding. Absolutely, very good. We've been lucky. We've had free free advice from her for a long, long time. So, so I guess I can. Is there any other discussion? I can ask for a send us to. Do you have anything? Public comment. Ask if we have any. Do you have and I really think the motion should be to enter into the agreement because this one I don't think has been signed yet. So it's. Yes, it has. Okay. It has. She had to use okay. there was an emergency. She, there was an emergency situation. Yeah. Good. Yep. So, any further discussion with the commission? If not, Senator, would you please ask if um, anyone in the audience? Do we have any citizens who would like to speak on the hiring of Lisa Hendrickson, Inc., to help us with our human resource issues? Okay, I have no attendees wishing to speak, so we will conclude that portion of the participation. All right, um, Mary, you please call roll on this. Mr. Gray, yes. 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 Yeah. And thank you, Lisa, if you're out there. We'll see. Okay, um, moving on to the third item, which is the approval of the 2021 holidays. And we basically just go by the county calendar. So. And I'll make a motion that we approve those listed uh, holidays, which are New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, which is a two day holiday, and Christmas. Second. Motion by Vice President Robinson, second by Commissioner O'Neill. Any discussion with the commission? Any discussion in the audience? Any audience discussion? Please raise your hand at this time. Looks like we do not have discussion with the topic of holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, please follow up. Commissioner Bradsky? Yes. Commissioner Neal? Yes. Vice Mayor Robinson? Yes. Yes. Okay, and the last item under negotiation. Is the appeal of the Planning and Zoning Board's decision for 5181st Avenue West? Um, I don't know if anybody's read the different um, emails that have been going with the people in that little area, and I don't know if anybody is aware of the Planning and Zoning decision. They, I guess, Bruce had told them they need to have a backyard designation to put a fence up, and so they presented it to the King Z board and they did not want to uh, designate a backyard. So um, the applicant is uh, appealing to the commission to overturn the decision of the King Z. Um, and I don't, Cindy, can you see if Mr. and Mrs. DeWitt are on the line that they could talk to us? Could, could you give me the name again, uh, Mayor? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. DeWitt. DeWitt, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And I do have hand raised. Would you like me to allow to talk? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Melanie DeWitt, you are now permitted to talk. You just need to unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Yeah, actually, okay. I'm going to give her more than three minutes because she's an actual agenda item. Okay. All right. Melanie, you may go ahead and speak. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much for allowing me to talk. Um, again, I'm Melanie DeWitt. Our address is 50 181st Street. And when we initially bought the property to build, to construct our home, we, I guess, were ignorant. We did not realize we had two front yards. And the, um, the only thing that my husband and I are asking for, um, we want to construct just a three feet tall, three foot tall, wrought iron um, fence for our two small dogs. Um, it, it's not a privacy fence and it's not a permanent fence. It's one that's really like a garden fence that you just step on and press into the ground just so that our two dogs could stay contained in our yard. Um, it, basically, it's a play pen for our two small dogs. We don't have much of a front yard or or I guess both front yards. We don't have much of two front yards, but it's just something that to keep our dogs from trying to get into the street or away from us if they get off their leashes. So it's just a safety measure. We're, we're not interested in, you know, redesignating our yards or anything like that. We just wanted approval to put this temporary fence up for our two small pets. And th that's all. Thank you. Thank you. So let me ask a, a, a question. This is Vice Mayor Robinson. Um, this temporary fence, how temporary is it? I mean, is, is it all year temporary? Is it temporary while you're there? What's, you know, help me understand temporary. Uh, temporary, uh, you know, it's just if anything happens to our dogs, uh, we would not use it. it. Like, again, it's like a playpen. If, if, and if whatever, I mean, if we're, we're here, going to be here more than 50% of the time, um, it's just, I guess when I say temporary, it's not going to be anything in concrete. Uh, and it's not going to be any taller than three feet tall. It's just enough sp space if you, I don't know if you all had the pictures of our property, but it's very, very, very small. Okay, my, my concern with that temporary fence also, and if you're not here all the time, is our ordinance which re which requires if you're absent for anything that could become airborne in high winds to be uh to be uh, removed or secured oh okay okay um it, it's just one of these garden fences like i said i think i sent pictures um we could permanently put it into the ground we were just trying to do something to maintain our dogs um but if if the if the council wants it in concrete, we can certainly do that. Um, You're buying it off it's, of right? Pardon me. You're buying it off of Wayfair, correct? Because I went on Wayfair to look for it. Yes, ma'am. It, it's coming off of Wayfair, um, and like I said, we have two small dogs, so they can't jump over three feet. Um, if we need to put it in concrete, we certainly can. Um, it's, it's just something to maintain our dogs, like a playpen. Ma'am, can I ask you a question? I, I don't have yes. no work in front of me of what this is, but I remember looking at your yard. I drove over there yesterday. Do your neighbors have any problem with this? The way I understand it, I, I honestly, I don't know what the issues are with it. Um, the way I understood it from the last meeting is that if and if we were designated as a backyard, I guess in the, that you can do a six foot fence. I, I mean, I'm not really, I wasn't really clear on all of that. Um, we are not doing that. We don't want to obstruct anybody's views. This is just simply something for our two small dogs. I, I, I... I don't see any, an issue myself that can, uh, if, if your neighbors don't have a problem with it uh, and it's a temporary fence that you're going to move and you're not going to leave it here when you, when you leave and you try to fence in your whole yard because uh, when I went over there, you do have a front yard and you do have a back of your house. Okay. Uh, I, that's cut and dry. You have a front and you have a rear. But they don't. I, well, I, I know, not, no, no. <laughs> It's, it is it is small. No, I got I have to say but that. But they're two front yards. It's like you can't have a front. That's the problem. So we have to designate something. 
Was and, it a double lock? Yes, it was a two okay. lock combined. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I talked to <laughs> all of you over there about this issue. And I think the main concern is that once you designate something a backyard, that opens up a whole host of other things like could you put a pool in there, a jacuzzi, a satellite dish, any structures of any kind, an outdoor kitchen, a shed, a storage building, decks, carport, anything that normal backyards would be able to have. That is their concern. But I think um, we can probably say yes to this if you would agree that the only thing that you would ever allow, and I don't have to ask Attorney Denheim if this would work, <coughs> that you would sign something that the only designation of a backyard is for this little three foot fence with all this airflow so that you could never have you know anything higher you could never put any sort of pool or structure there it would literally be for a three foot fence with that kind of airflow i mean i don't know if i don't know what the right words are to say this but it would convey with the property so that if you sold it that the same Restrictions would be with the new owners. Special variance. Yeah, special variance. Well, this, this, I mean, first of all, would you agree to those conditions on um, if the commission wished to determine? I think the property owner certainly has uh, the right to come and ask that one yard or the other <coughs> be designated as a backyard under your ordinance because it is an odd lot and it does extend between two basically parallel streets. So it meets the definition in your code. As I understand it, the concern is that things other than the fence that might otherwise be allowed in the backyard at other locations might pop up there. And so I don't know if the applicant is the only thing you're requesting just the three foot fence. Yeah, that's correct. That's uh, uh, just around the turf is all we're wanting to put um we have artificial turf on on that section and that's all we're wanting to put a little small fence around is just the turf well i think what the mayor is inquiring about then is if the commission was inclined to designate that portion as your backyard to allow you to have the fence would you be in agreement to accepting a condition that you wouldn't have any other structures or items in there, such as the mayor mentioned a pool, a jacuzzi, a satellite dish, or any of those other items that other people might have in backyards that are truly backyards, uh, other than just three foot fence and for Commissioner Robinson's concern that it, the fence would be moved out during the portion of the year that you're not here. Unless you're going to put it in concrete. <laughs> would that be a conditional approval? Well, it would be approval, but with the agreement of the applicant that those conditions would apply and would run with the land and be binding on successors and in that sort of thing. So the, that would convey with the property. Yes. In perpetuity, whatever, right? Yes. yes. If, if the applicant agrees so you with would that, agree to that. And if you all, as a commission, wish to go ahead and grant approval based on that agreement. Melanie? Well, absolutely. That's the, yeah. From day one, that's all we, we when we were working with Bruce. That's basically all. You know, we were just trying to do what was right and get permission to do this. And it was just for a fence. Um, the property is so small. You couldn't put in. You couldn't put a pool or anything. I know. I know. But and if the commission does grant the approval, we firm that up in writing on something that can be recorded in the official record so that it, in yep. any event you sell the property and somebody else then wants to change it, it's certainly a, a record. So I, I just want to clarify, I want a clarification on this. And by the way, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is Commissioner Krajewski. I'm, I'm a dog lover. Most people that know me, I have a dog. So, and he's a little guy, he's a Morky, dog of about five, six pounds. Um, this was a tough one for me. And uh, I would agree that based on what the mayor as well as the vice mayor discussed, if we could somehow come up with something that would be in perpetuity and in no way, shape or form would um, in some ways be, be able to be circumvented, then, uh, then I'm, I'm gonna vote yes. I'll make a motion we pass a conditional approval to put the three foot rod iron fence up at 5181 Avenue West. Second, I was going to suggest it to be a little bit more specific. Okay, if you don't want to say, 
trying to work something for you, assuming that's what all of you and you're shaking your head might like to go along with yes. is, would be that you designate that rear portion as the backyard, but with the conditions on that as agreed to by the applicant, that the only item that would be able to be constructed in that backyard is the three foot fence and not anything else such as swimming pool, hot tub, satellite dishes or other such structures. And that the applicant, uh, with the applicant's agreement, which she has agreed, uh, that that be reduced to writing to be in perpetuity and in an agreement that runs with the land and binding from any successors and entry. And filed with the court? I'm sorry. And filed in court? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. You have to. Okay, that's the motion. <laughs> well, that's what I'm suggesting the motion might be. I I say what me, what all you want. Down. All of your things. Mary, you want to repeat that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And I, I think it'd be appropriate to make sure that's clear with the applicant that she agrees with that again. Did you add? Yes. Are you in agreement with what Attorney Reinhardt proposed? Yeah. Yes. Did you understand it all? I, I think I did. <laughs> Thank so, you. you. Cannot agree to in uh, writing and agreement in writing. I guess in addition to that would be part of it, and it can't be that it'd be back for the commission next month. So, sounds like that would work. Okay, so you're just going to say what he said. Yeah, I make a motion. Okay. And I'm seconding what he said. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Neal, a second by Commissioner Fiasco. Uh, any further discussion amongst the commission? Senda. Yes, we have one citizen who would like to speak, C.R. Warren. You are allowed to talk and you have three minutes. Um, please state your name, your um, address, and then I will, un you know, just unmute yourself as well. Hi, um, this is Christina Warren. Can you hear me? Yep, you're good to go. Oh, let me turn on my volume. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is Christina Warren. I am at uh, 35, 180th Avenue West, um, just right next door to the DeWitts. Um, <clears throat> I think I can speak for the neighborhood when I say that none of us have a problem with a fence for the dog. The problem that we had was um, just the designation of the backyard and making sure sure that whatever whatever they are allowed on that backyard if it's designated as a backyard that's it that's where it ends so it doesn't go to the next person who purchases it and then they come back and say hey you know it's a backyard we would like x y and z in our backyard because everybody else has x y and z in their backyard so that was really my concern and i think the neighbor's concern and i think that's it thank you so much for your time thank you I don't, know, I don't think you heard it. All right, Mary, is there anybody else on the No, uh, there are no further citizens who would like to speak. All right, Mary, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Fayette? Yes. 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 Okay, so now we are on to public comments. Senda, um, would you please? ask if anyone has any public comments that weren't addressed on the agenda item. Yes. Um, are, if there are any citizens that have any additional items that they would like to bring forward to the commission, this would be the time to do so. Uh, so please raise your hand and I will identify you and allow you to speak. I'll give everyone a second to do that. And we have uh, Foster uh, who is who has their hand raised. So. I believe this is Lisa. I will. I have unmuted you, and you are. Please, you know, state your name and address, and you will have three minutes from the time you begin to speak. Go right ahead. Hi, Hi thank you. Eight forty-five, one hundred and eightieth Avenue East. Lisa Foster. I just wanted to uh, remind everybody to make sure that they report their damages on the county damage application with photos. Uh, we're trying to document as much damage as possible to increase our chances of getting some federal funding for the damages from Tropical Storm Ada. And the link is pinellascounty.org. In the middle of that homepage, there's a link 
to click over to the survey to report the damages. It's really important to upload pictures showing that water line if you took some uh, immediately after the flood or during the flood. So let me ask a question, uh, Lisa. So, so we loaded all of that data into, uh, what is that? that uh, Collector app. Yes, right. Is that, did that so do that, it or? So that's, that's good information, um, but we are low on numbers because we just had pockets of damage. So from a, from a regional level, from a state level, the damages are not high enough to qualify us for that individual assistance. So we're trying to make sure that we've got everything documented. It's really difficult to capture um, flooding damage from a drive-by um, damage assessment. Oh, you know, so wind, dam wind damage is easy to see, right? So it's easy to document, but flooding, you, you can't tell how much flooding occurred inside these houses. And what we really need is pictures of how deep the water got inside the houses so that we can send that up to the state and hopefully qualify for some assistance. Okay, so I, so I know the mayor sent a, sent a message out. We can ask her to send another one. What we have done is that uh, all, all of those properties that, that we were aware of and both Neil and I uh, went out and did this uh, separately. So, you know, we compared notes and I found some that he didn't and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, what we've done is that uh, any, any individual who's come in for a, a permit that's associated with it, uh, Sherry has uh, sent that information on to me so that we're making sure that that property was included within, within our, uh, with, within our numbers and within the, the data collector. Um, what we, what we could use some help with mayor is another message going out and asking people to send us, uh, photographs of interior damage, because that's something that we wouldn't have. Okay. Would that be helpful, Lisa? Is that, that answer? Yeah. That would be very helpful. And what we need is for them to be uploaded to that application that's on the county website. Okay. So that there, all, the, all the municipalities are, all the information from all the towns is consolidated um, so that our emergency management department can get all the documentation together to send, send up to the state and not to put a fire under it, but our deadline is Friday. So if we could get all those reported by Thursday night would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and lastly, on Tuesday evening, the County Emergency Management Department is hosting a online um, Zoom flood information meeting. And I can pass that information to you to share with, with everybody. So if anybody flooded, um, we're hoping to just help provide information, you know, if some folks are still struggling with what to do. That would be great if you get us that, you can include uh, that in Ellie, something else. Uh, Gary Burrell sent that over today, Lisa. And I oh. did post it up on Facebook along with the information the county sent out about the residents to post up to that link with their information and pictures. But Fantastic. That could also be an alert for now if you're yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, Lisa. Um, and we have uh, one more resident who would like to speak, Carol Music. Um, Carol, you are allowed to speak. Please unmute yourself and you can begin. Can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Okay. Am I allowed to speak about things from uh, this meeting? Uh, not any previous subjects. This would be new subjects. Okay, because I had my hand raised about the last one, but you didn't see me. Uh, I did not see it. Okay. Um, okay, so um, last week was the uh, decision about the mediation. Um, I was not allowed to respond once again, uh, just like what you said, to um, uh, the things that were discussed. I had many things to talk about, but I'll talk about them now. The most specific thing was the mayor accusing me of fraud about the uh, homestead exemption for 17822 Lee Avenue in public. I want to address that. First of all, we, uh, at the time when we bought 17822 Lee Avenue on February 16, 2019, it was our every intention to make that our homestead. We would plan to live there so that we could watch over our rental house next, at the, next door. 
We immediately began our plans to build our dream house. We turned in plans and filed for the same variance that everyone else got on that block in August. And uh, as you all know, we've tried for the last 18 months to get that accomplished. And you may not remember, but on October 9th, 2019, every single person unanimously agreed to change the uh, land development code to accomplish that. And um, somehow within the last 18 months, Mary Beth single-handedly was able to, through misinformation in the workshops, lead you all to um, vote against the mediation after she fired Bruce Cooper. And yes, I would like to know why he was fired without anybody knowing why after Mary Beth designated herself as the building official without any building experience. So <clears throat> I also talked to the property appraiser's office and yes, you can rent your house when it's homesteaded. We did not receive a homestead exemption last year because you have to have a homestead exemption. You have to have homestead exemption for two years before you get your $800 maximum homestead. And Mary Beth did not call the property. Well, she may have called the property appraiser, but whom she called was the code enforcement officer on her cell phone to come and harass us, harass the rental uh, uh, people that were there and my manager. And that is not what you're supposed to do as mayor. That's retaliation. And as far as the uh, uh, lady who had the uh, temporary fence, is it my understanding that if you, if you wanna put something like a temporary fence in a yard, that's supposed to have a designated backyard according to the codes, we have to come to the commission and ask for that. And in order to get that, y'all would do something like put a perpetual uh, deed restriction that you can't put something in your backyard like everybody else has in their backyard. Uh, why, can't you, why aren't you allowed to put a temporary fence like a playpen for your kids or your dog or whatever you want? It's your property. I'm through. Okay, Carol, you have 23 seconds left. Thank you very much. All right, anyone else? Um, I have no one else uh, requesting uh, to speak at this time. Let me just, yes, correct. There are no hands raised. Okay, under uh, Ms. Lane, since we uh, canceled our workshop, we won't be having that, but we have the regular meeting Wednesday, January 13th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Is there anything else? Merry Christmas, Megan. Oh, yeah. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, let, let me just alert you, and I've been thinking during the meeting, and uh, certainly we will be looking into very promptly tomorrow and the next day what you brought up earlier about waiving some restrictions and trying to make things good for the residents as quickly as possible. Um, hopefully that can be done without a special meeting for the commission to vote on something, but it may be necessary depending on what we find that we believe it's advisable to ask you all to have a special meeting real quickly to vote on something or ratify something. So okay. I, I have the words that you can yeah. actually use from the I, from Rebecca Quinn. I'm I'm hoping that's not going to be yeah. necessary, but I just want to alert everybody that it, it could be a possibility. Okay. Good enough. Anything else? Good night. This meeting's adjourned. I wrote it immediately. And my ladder on my left is so weird. I think all of them. But I still do that. I got to know if I have some more jobs. I got to do it. 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 I got to do it.